613. Cover yourselves with the talits. Positive commandments 248. The worship of God. Believe in God as the supreme sovereign and the only source of power in the universe. Reverence God by keeping his laws. Submit to God as the supreme head to be in unity with God. Love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Read, study, and meditate on the book of the law. Hold fast to God. Serve God. Take an oath by God's name. Walk in God's ways. Sanctify God's name. Teach the book of the law to our children. Bind the law upon our foreheads, gates, and doorposts of our houses. Bind the law upon our hands and as frontlets between our eyes. Preach and publish God's law. Make zetzet on the corners of the tablet. A king must acquire and apply the book of the law. Be thankful to God in prayer, praise, and deed. Acquire the book of the law. Gather for the reading of the law every seventh year. Build a sanctuary for God. Reverence God in a sanctuary of the high tabernacle. The Levites must guard the sanctuary of God at all times. The Levites must do their appointed work in the high tabernacle of God. The Kohanim must wash their hands and feet with water when they go into the sanctuary. The Kohanim must light the menorah, seven lamps stand. The Kohanim must bless the people with the name of God. The Kohanim must set a show bread before God in the sanctuary. The Kohanim must burn the incense daily, morning and evening on a golden altar. The Kohanim must offer a meal offering daily, morning and evening to God and keep the fire burning continually on the altar. The Kohanim must remove the ashes from the altar daily. The Kohan must keep the ritually unclean out of the inner court of the high tabernacle. The Kohanim must be regarded as holy. The Kohanim must dress in special priestly garments, a breastplate and an ephod, a robe and a quilted tunic, a mitre and a girdle. The Kohanim will bear responsibility for the sanctuary of God. The Kohanim must perform their services in the sanctuary of God at their appointed times. The Kohanim must prepare the holy anointing oil according to its formula. The Kohanim may become ritually unclean due to certain close relatives. The Kohen Gadol may marry only a virgin. The continual burnt offering, daily tamid sacrifice must be offered twice daily. The grain and drink offering must be offered twice daily. An additional sacrifice must be offered every Sabbath. An additional sacrifice must be offered in celebration of the Feast of New Moon. Burnt offerings must be offered every day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pesach. The Omer offering of the first barley must be brought on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and be waved by the Kohanim on the second day of the Feast. The second Passover must be killed on the 14th day of Aviv, Nisan, between two evenings. Those who are unclean from a dead body or are wearing a journey must kill the Passover lamb in the second month, Ziv, on the 14th day at dusk. The Passover in the second month must be held according to all its ordinances. Burnt offerings must be offered at the Feast of Shavuot. An offering of two wave loaves of two ten parts of an ephah of fine flour baked with leaven for first fruits unto the Lord during the Feast of Shavuot must be made. An additional sacrifice must be offered on the Feast of Trumpets. An additional sacrifice must be offered on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. The, the Atonement Yom Kippur offerings must be offered and performed by the Kohen Gadol on the Day of Atonement. An additional sacrifice must be offered every day of the Feast of Tabernacles. An additional sacrifice must be offered on the last great day. Three times a year, keep a feast to God at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pesach, at the Feast of Shavuot, at the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of God must be kept only at the place God chooses, the High Tabernacle. Three times in a year must all males appear before God in the place He chooses, the High Tabernacle. The silver trumpets must be sounded at feast times and new moons so that we will be remembered before our God and also in times of tribulations to call the congregation together. All animals to be sacrificed must be without blemish. All animals to be sacrificed must be at least eight days old. All offerings must be salted. The law of the burnt offering 
the law of the sin offering, the law of the trespass offering, the law of the peace offering, the law of the grain offering, if the entire community sins ignorantly, a sin offering must be brought. If a person sins ignorantly, a sin offering must be brought when he learns of his sin. If a person is in doubt as to whether he has sinned in regard to any of the holy things, a guilt offering must be brought. A guilt offering must be brought for stealing, swearing falsely, and sins of a like nature. The guilt offerings must be brought to one's, according to one's means. We must confess our sins, repent of them, refund that in which we have sinned with the fifth of the principle thereof to the owner and be converted to the keeping of God's laws. A man who has a discharge must bring a sacrifice. A woman who has a discharge must bring a sacrifice. A woman must bring a sacrifice after childbirth. A leper must bring a sacrifice after he has been cleansed. The first tide is holy and belongs to God. The firstborn of clean animals are holy and belong to God. All firstborns belong to God, but may be redeemed. The firstling of a donkey must be redeemed. If the firstling of a donkey is not redeemed, its neck must be broken. All the tithes and offerings must be brought unto the place God chooses, the high tabernacle of the community. Our offerings must only be at the high tabernacle where God has chosen to put us name. The blood of the sacrifices must be poured out on the altar of God at the high tabernacle. Sanctified animals that have become blemished must be redeemed. Any animal exchanged for an offering is also holy. The Kohanim are to eat the meat of the consecrated offerings. The Kohanim are to eat the remainder of the grain offerings. Consecrated meat of an offering, which becomes ritually unclean, must be burned. Consecrated meat of an offering, not eating within this point of time, must be burned. Vows. A Nazarite must abstain from wine and strong drink, shall eat neither fresh nor dried grapes, and must let his hair grow during the period of Nazarite shep. A Nazarite must shave his head and bring the sacrifice when the period of Nazarite ship is over. Vows and oaths to God must be kept. The law of binding and keeping a vow. Anyone who touches or eats the carcass of an unclean animal becomes ritually unclean. Anyone who touches or eats the carcass of a clean animal that dies of itself or is torn by wild animals becomes ritually unclean. Articles and food that come in contact with sources of ritual uncleanness become ritually unclean. Menstruous women are ritually unclean. Women after childbirth are ritually unclean. Anyone with a spreading skin disease is ritually unclean. And if clothing contaminated with spreading disease is ritually unclean. A house contaminated with a spreading disease is ritually unclean. A man having an abnormal discharge, zab, is ritually unclean. Anyone or anything coming in contact with semen becomes ritually unclean. A woman with an abnormal discharge is ritually unclean. A human corpse or anyone who touches it is ritually unclean. The purification water purifies the ritually unclean. Ritual purification must be by laundering, ablution, and making atonement through the Kohanim. Those ritually unclean of a spreading skin disease must follow the specified purification procedure. Those unclean of a spreading skin disease must shave off all their hair. Those unclean of a spreading skin disease must be easily distinguishable. The ashes of the red heifer are to be used in the ritual purification. The Kohangadol must set the valley of a person dedicated to God. The Kohangadol must set the valley of an animal dedicated to God. The Kohangadol must set the valley of a field dedicated to God. If one sins ignorantly regarding the holy offerings, full restitution must be made, adding a fifth of the value to it. The Kohangadol must set the value for a house dedicated to God. The fruit of the 40 years growth of trees is holy and must be given to the Kohanim. The corners of a field that is reaped must be left for the poor. The gleanings of a field that is reaped must be left for the poor. The forgotten sheaves of a field that is reaped 
must be left for the poor. Any remaining olives or grapes must be left for the poor. Any fallen grapes must be left for the poor. The first fruit of all our labor must be separated and brought to the sanctuary of God, the high tabernacle of the community. All holy offerings must be given to the Kohanim in the community. The first tithe, first one-tenth of all our increase belongs to God. The second tithe, second one-tenth must be set aside for the feasts of God. The Kohanim and Levites must also offer up a tenth part of the tithes. The third tithe, third one-tenth, must be set aside in the third and sixth years of the seven-year cycle for the Levites, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows who are within our gates. Tithes and offerings must be presented to God with prayer. All our tithes and offerings must be brought before God in the sanctuary in the community. The first portion of the grain offering must be given to God throughout our generations. Every seventh year is a Sabbath of rest for the land. Whatever the land yields during the sabbatical year will be for food. We must consecrate and proclaim the Jubilee year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, in the, in the Jubilee year, the shofar must be sounded and Hebrew slaves set free. In the Jubilee year, in all the land, in the Jubilee year, all the land is to be returned to its appointed owners. In a walled city, the seller has a right to buy back or house within a year of a sale. The years until the Jubilee must be counted. The seventh year is the year of release. And the seventh year, a, a foreigner may be pressed for payment of a debt. The Kohanim must receive the share, their shares of all clean animals that are slaughtered as a sacrifice. The Kohanim must receive the first fleece from the shearing of the sheep. Anything devoted to God becomes most holy to God. To be fit for consumption, clean animals must be prepared as commanded in the Torah. We must not eat any animal that dies of itself or is killed by wild beasts or without pouring out its blood. The blood of a slaughtered clean animal must be poured on the ground and covered with earth. Set the mother bird free when taking the nest or the young. Examine the meat of an animal to make sure it is permitted for consumption. Examine fowls to make sure they are permitted for consumption. Examine locusts to make sure they are permitted for consumption. Examine fish to make sure they are permitted for consumption. The new moons are to be observed to set God's feasts. The, set, the seventh day of every week is God's Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. Keep the Sabbath day holy by making preparation in advance. Remove all leaven from all your dwellings before the 15th of Aviv. On the 15th day of Aviv, teach our children the story of Exodus from Egypt. The Passover, Pesach lamb, must be eaten in haste. On the night of the 15th day of Aviv, roasted with fire, eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Eat unleavened bread from the 15th through the 21st of Aviv. The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pesach, is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. Cooking may be done on a high day Sabbath, but not on the weekly Sabbath. The seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. Count 50 days from the day after the first holy Sabbath of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the count of Omer, to the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. The Feast of Weeks is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. The Feast of Trumpets is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. The Day of Atonement is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is a day of complete fasting. The first day of the Feast of Tabernacles is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. The last great day is a Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. A Sukkah must be built before the Feast of Tabernacles Dwell in booths, sukkah, during the days of the Feast of Tabernacles. The shofar must be sounded on the Feast of Trumpets. The practice of idolatry must be destroyed. Blot out the remembrance of idol worshippers. 
A city that turns to idol worship must be treated according to the law. The, the idol worshiping nations must suffer complete destruction. Remember what the idol worshippers did to Israel. Every male of 20 years old and above must give half a shekel to the community annually. Listen to and obey God's anointed servants. The king must be appointed by God. Listen to and obey God's anointed priests, Levites, and council of judges. Speak the truth while testifying in a lawsuit or an investigation. Judges and leaders of the community must be chosen according to God's laws. Judges and leaders of the community chosen by God must judge the people impartially according to God's laws. Whoever is aware of evidence in a case must speak up and testify. The testimony of witnesses shall be judged according to the law. False witnesses shall be judged according to the law. When a person is found murdered and the murder is unknown, the prescribed ritual must be performed. Six cities of refuge in the land of Israel must be established. The Kohanim and Levites must be given cities to live in, build a guardrail around a roof to guard against hazards in the homes. Stolen property must be returned to its owner. The poor must be taken care of according to God's laws. When a Hebrew slave goes free, the owner must give him gifts. Loans to brothers must be without interest. Restore a pledge for a loan to its owner if it needs it. Pay the hired worker his wages at the agreed time. Lost property must be restored to its owner. Loans to a foreigner may be with interest. Permit the poor to eat of the produce of the vineyard or the standing grain. You must help a fallen animal, whether it belongs to the person you hate or a stranger. Help a brother who has a fallen animal. Those who sin must be corrected. Love your neighbor, whether a brother or, a, or an enemy, as yourself. Love the stranger and the new convert among you. Use only honest weights and measures. Show honor and respect to parents. Show honor and respect for God's appointed teachers. Become holy as God is holy. Marriage must be according to God's laws. The bridegroom is to rejoice with his bride. The union of marriage must ensure the blessings of fruitfulness. All males must be circumcised. Newborn males on the eighth day. A brother must either marry the widow or his brother who died childless. A brother may release his brother's widow. Divorce can only be as a result of unfaithfulness. The Kohanim must judge in a case of premarital promiscuity. A man who violates a virgin must pay the bride price, marry her if the father permits, and may never divorce her. A woman's father may utterly refuse to give his daughter to a man even though he pays the bride price. The female captive must be treated in accordance with special regulations concerning repentance and conversion. A woman suspected of adultery must submit to the required tests. Our conduct must be according to God's law during times of persecution. The Kohanim must address the congregation in times of tribulation. The camp of God must be kept in a sanitary condition, permitting no uncleanness. The camp of God must be equipped with the necessary implements to keep it in a sanitary condition, and each must do his share. Hebrew slaves must be treated according to special laws for them. The owner of a slave or a son may marry his Hebrew maid servant. If the owner or a son does not marry his Hebrew maid servant, he must allow her father to redeem her. The regulation of the foreign slaves, judgment must be rendered in the case of injury caused by a person, judgment must be rendered in the case of injury caused by an animal, judgment must be rendered in the case of injury caused to an animal. A thief must make full restitution or else be sold for his theft. Judgment must be rendered in cases of property damage caused by animals. Judgment must be rendered in cases of fire damage. Judgment must be rendered in cases involving items held for safekeeping. Judgment must be rendered in cases involving animals held for safekeeping. 
judgment must be rendered in disputes arising out of sales. Judgment must be rendered in disputes over possession of property. Judgment must be rendered in disputes arising out of inheritance. Judgment must be rendered in cases of claims against a borrower. Monetary restitution must be made in cases involving bodily damage. When required by law, the judges must administer the appropriate punishment. The law concerning unintentional homicide, the law concerning murder, there is one law for all, for the member of the community of God and for the stranger. Anyone who sins breaks any of God's laws, whether intentionally or unintentionally, is guilty. The penalty for sin, which is the breaking transgression of God's laws, is eternal death. The body of one who is executed must be buried the same day. 248, the last of the positive commandments. The Kohengad all shall make atonement for sins, the holy sanctuary, the tent of meeting, and for all the people of the community, peace in the name of Hashem. The Lord thy word is lamp unto my feet. Pray thee, O Lord, to write thy words on the stones of our hearts that we may do thy will O Lord to write thy words on the stones of our hearts that we may die O Lord that we may do O Lord the prohibitions blasphemy thou shalt not take God's name in vain and bring it to nothing you shall not profane the name of God you shall not blaspheme the holy name of God you shall not swear falsely by the name of God thou must not test doubt nor rebel against God you must not worship God in the ways of idol worshippers you must not allow the body of one hang to remain so overnight idol worship and related practices you shall not trust in any power but God do not make images of gods or idols to be worshipped. Do not take on the character of the hidden gods and idols. Do not make idols or gods out of anything. Thou shalt not bow down to any other gods or idols. Do not be misled in any way to obey, serve, nor follow the ways of heathens, and then turn to worship idols. Do not sacrifice your seed children to Moloch. Do not seek after nor consult mediums. Do not seek after nor consult familiar spirits. Thou must not seek to learn the ways of idols and other gods in order to follow them. Do not use a sacred pillar or pole for the worship of God nor set the feast by it. Thou shalt not make idols out of carved stone. Do not worship Asherah, the queen of heaven. Do not vow or worship in the name of any other gods or idol. Thou shalt not teach nor entice any person to worship other gods. Thou shalt not teach nor entice any community to worship idols or other gods. Do not listen to anyone who practices or teaches idol worship. Do not give in to anyone who practices or teaches idol worship. Do not pity anyone who teaches idol worship. Do not spare anyone who teaches idol worship. Do not conceal the fact when someone tries to teach idol worship. Do not lust after the wealth of other gods and idols. Do not spare from destruction or rebuild that which must be destroyed due to idol worship. 
destroy and do not make use of any property condemned because of idol worship. Thou shalt not bring idol worship into the community of the Most High God. Do not teach in the name of any other God. Do not teach or prophesy falsely in the name of God. Do not listen to anyone who teaches in the name of any other God. Do not reverence nor fear anyone who teaches presumptuously in the name of God. Thou must not imitate the ways of idol worshippers nor practice their customs. You must not practice foretelling the future by consulting other gods. Do not practice astrology. Do not practice foretelling the future by interpreting omens. Do not practice sorcery. Do not practice magic. Do not practice witchcraft. Do not consult with demon spirits. Do not practice necromancy. Attempt to contact the dead. They know nothing. Women must not wear that men's garments which pertains to men. Men must not wear women's garments. Do not make any cuttings on, any, on your body in honor of the dead. Do not wear holy garments made of both wool and linen. Do not shave the sides of your hair in honor of the dead. Do not shave the sides of your beard in honor of the dead. Do not make or imprint marks, tattoos on your body in honor of the dead. Prohibitions against making allies with idol worshiping nations. Do not return to the ways of idol worshipping and sin. Do not follow teachings other than the laws of God. Do not make allies with idol worshipping nations. Do not spare any of the idol worshipping nations. Do not show mercy to the idol worshipping nations. Do not permit idol worshippers to remain in the community. Do not make marriages with idol worshippers. Do not allow idol worshippers to join the community. Do not seek the peace or the prosperity of an idol worshipper. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. Do not destroy fruit trees. Do not forget the evil done by the adversaries of God. Do not fear the adversaries of God. Dietary laws. Do not eat any unclean animal. Do not eat any unclean fish or seafood. Do not eat any unclean fowl. Do not eat any unclean flying insects. Do not eat any insect that creeps on the ground. Do not eat worms found in fruit of produce. Do not eat any swarming insects. Do not eat any reptiles. Do not eat a torn or mold animal. Do not eat any animal found already dead. Do not eat or drink blood. Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Eat not the meat of a bull that has been stoned to death for goring someone. Touch not the carcass of an unclean animal. Eat not the fat of sacrificed animals. Do not boil a young goat in its mother's milk since it is a ritual of idol god worshippers. Do not eat of or offer any sacrifices to the gods. Do not eat any bread in celebration of the feast until the Omer offering has been presented to the Kohanim at the beginning of the 15th of Aviv or Nisan. Do not eat of the fresh green ears in celebration of the feast until the Omer offering has been presented to the Kohanim in the beginning of the feast of the 15th of Aviv or Nisan. Do not eat any parched grain in celebration of the feast until the Omer offering has been presented to the Kohanim at the beginning of the 15th of Aviv or Nisan. Eat not the fruits of young trees for the first three years of growth. Eat not the produce from the planting of two kinds of seed. Do not eat any leavened products during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do not eat any leavened bread during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do not eat leavened bread with the Passover lamb. Do not, no leavened bread is to be found in any of your possessions during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. No leaven is to be found in any of your possessions during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do not eat or drink anything on the Day of Atonement. Do not partake of drink offerings to idols and other gods. Drunkenness of any sort is prohibited. Agriculture. Do not harvest the corners of a field, they are for the poor and for the stranger. Do not gather the gleanings of a field, they are for the poor and the stranger. Do not gather all the olives from the trees, they are for the poor and the strangers. Do not gather all the grapes from the vineyard, the remaining is for the poor and the stranger. Do not return to pick up a forgotten sheep from a field, it is for the fatherless, the widow and the stranger. Do not plant a field with two kinds of seed. Do not crossbreed different species of animals. Do not plant a vineyard with two kinds of seed. Do not work with two different species of animals yoked together. Do not muzzle the ox that treads out the grain. Do not sow the fields in the seventh year. Do not prune your vineyard or trees in the seventh year. Do not reap your harvest in the seventh year. Do not gather the grapes of the untended vines in the seventh year. Do not sow the fields in the jubilee year. Do not reap the harvest in the jubilee year. Do not gather the grapes of the untended vines in the jubilee year. The land must not be sold permanently. Do not sell the land belonging to the Levites. Do not neglect the Levites. Loans, business, and the treatment of slaves. 
Do not demand interest on a loan to a brother. Do not lend to a brother with interest. Do not borrow from a brother with interest. Do not participate at all in a loan to a brother with interest. Do not demand repayment of a loan after the seventh year. Do not refuse to lend to the poor because the seventh year is approaching. Do not harden your heart to the poor. Do not send a Hebrew slave away empty-handed when he finishes his period of service. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Withhold the wages of a hired man beyond their great time. Do not take security on the loan by force. Do not keep a poor man's security on the loan when he needs it. Do not take any security on the loan from a widow. Do not take a man's livelihood as security on the loan. Do not kidnap anyone. Do not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie. Do not rob, neither defraud anyone. Do not remove a landmark or alter land boundaries. Do not swear falsely by God's name. Do not deal falsely with anyone. Do not vow falsely regarding another man's property. Do not oppress one another in business. Do not take advantage of one another. Do not mistreat a stranger. Do not oppress a stranger in business. Do not return a slave who has fled from his master. Do not oppress or take advantage of a slave who has fled from his master. Do not take advantage of widows and orphans. Do not treat a brother as a false slave with no hope for redemption. Do not sell a brother as a slave to strangers. Do not treat a slave ruthlessly. Do not allow a stranger to mistreat a slave. Do not sell a maidservant to strangers. Do not deprive a wife or any female member of food clothing and their own shelter. Do not sell a female captive as a forced slave. Do not covet another person's wife. Do not covet another person's possessions. Do not covet the possessions of idol God worshippers. A hired worker must not make must not take more produce than he can eat. Do not fail to return a lost article to its owner. Do not refuse to help a man or an animal that is collapsing under its burden. Do not use dishonest weights and measures. Do not possess inaccurate weights and measures. Do not withhold the wages of a hired man all night until the morning. Sacrifices, tithes, and holy offerings. Do not offer tithes, vows, burnt offerings, and other offerings except at the altar of sacrifice in the high tabernacle of the community of the Lord our God. Do not offer consecrated animals except at the high tabernacle of the community of the Lord our God. Do not sanctify a blemished animal as an offering to God. Do not slaughter a blemished animal as an offering to God. Do not sprinkle the blood of a blemished animal on the altar of God. Do not burn the sacrificial portions of a blemished animal. Do not offer an animal with even a temporary blemish. Do not accept a blemished offering from a stranger. Do not inflict a blemish on an animal consecrated as an offering. Do not offer any leaven or honey on the altar. Do not offer a sacrifice without salt. Do not bring the financial gain from idol worship into the community, the house of the Lord our God. Do not kill an animal and its young on the same day. Do not use olive oil in the sin offering of the poor man. Do not use frankincense in the sin offering of the poor man. Do not use olive oil in the grain offering of jealousy. Do not use frankincense in the grain offering of jealousy. Do not make substitutes for any vowed offerings. Do not dedicate the firstborn of an animal since it already belongs to the Lord our God. Do not redeem the firstborn of clean animals since they belong to God and he has given them to Aaron and his sons, the Kohanim. Do not redeem tithes, they belong to God. Do not sell dedicated property, it belongs to God, which he has given as possession to Aaron and his sons, the Kohanim. Do not redeem dedicated property after the specified time, it belongs to God. God. Do not sever the head of a bird offered as a sin offering. Do not walk with a dedicated animal. Do not share a dedicated animal. Do not offer the Passover lamb with leaven. Do not allow the sacrificial fat of the Passover lamb to remain overnight. Do not allow the meat of the Passover lamb to remain overnight. Do not leave any part of the additional offering overnight. Do not allow any part of the second Passover lamb to remain overnight. Do not leave any part of the Thanksgiving offering until morning. Do not break any bones of the Passover lamb. Do not break any bones of the second Passover lamb. Do not remove the meat of the Passover lamb from the house where it was eaten. Do not bake the remainder of the grain offering with leaven. Do not eat the Passover lamb raw or boiled. No stranger or hired servants may eat of the Passover lamb. No uncircumcised person may eat of the Passover lamb. No one who has fallen away may eat of the Passover lamb. The Kohanim must not eat of the holy offering while ritually unclean. Do not eat any food which becomes ritually unclean. Do not eat of the sacrifices which remain on the third day. They must be burned. Sacrifices remaining on the third day will not be accepted by God. No one outside of the Kohanim family may eat of the holy offerings. No stranger or hired worker may eat of the holy offerings. No uncircumcised person may eat of the holy offerings. 
The Kohanim must not eat of the holy offerings while ritually unclean. The daughter of a Kohen who is married to a non-Kohen must not eat of the holy offerings. Do not eat the meat of the grain offering when the Kohen himself offers it. Do not eat of the sin offering whose blood is sprinkled on the inner altar. Do not eat any abominable thing whether unclean food or blemished offerings. Do not eat the second tithe of your grain except at, the, at God's feast in the community of the Lord our God. Do not drink the second tithe of your wine except at God's feast in the community of the Lord our God. Do not eat the second tithe of your oil except at God's feast in the community of the Lord our God. The Kohanim must not eat the second tithe except at God's feast in the community of the Lord our God. Do not eat the feast sacrifices except at God's feast in the community of the Lord our God, the Kohanim must not eat of the burnt offering at all. The meat from any of the sacrifices must not be eaten before the blood has been sprinkled on the altar. The Kohanim must not eat of the holy offerings except at the holy place, the high tabernacle of the community. No stranger may eat of the holy offerings. Do not eat of this second tithe while at home in a state of ritual impurity. Do not eat of the second tithe in honor of the dead. Do not eat of the second tithe in honor of any other God but the Most High God. No unauthorized person may eat of the holy offerings. Do not delay to pay your vows to God. Do not delay to pay your tithe and offerings to God. Do not appear before God at his feast in his high tabernacle, empty-handed, that is, without offerings. Do not break vows and oaths to God. Sinful relations. A man must not lust after any woman forbidden to him. A man must not have sexual relations with a woman until he has lawfully acquired her in marriage. A man must not have sexual relations with his mother. A man must not have sexual relations with his father's wife. A man must not have sexual relations with his sister. A man must not have sexual relations with his half-sister. A man must not have sexual relations with his son's daughter. A man must not have sexual relations with his daughter's daughter. A man must not have sexual relations with his daughter. A man must not have sexual relations with his father's sister. Sister. A man must not have sexual relations with his mother's sister. A man must not have sexual relations with his father's brother's wife. A man must not have sexual relations with his daughter-in-law. A man must not have sexual relations with his brother's wife. A man must not have sexual relations with no marry a woman and her daughter. A man must not have sexual relations with no marry a woman and her son's daughter. A man must not have sexual relations with no marry a woman and her daughter's daughter. A man must not have sexual relations with one wife in the dwelling of another. A man must not approach a menstruous woman for sexual relations. Do not commit adultery. A man must not have sexual relations with an animal. A woman must not have sexual relations with an animal. A man must not have sexual relations with another man. A man must not have sexual relations with a woman betrothed to another man. Do not give your sons and daughters in marriage to idol worshippers. Do not allow your daughter to play the harlot, allowing her to commit fornication. A man must not take back again as wife, nor have sexual relations with a woman who returns to him after marriage and sexual relations with another man. A childless widow must not marry anybody outside her husband's family. A man must not divorce a woman he married after having seduced her. A man must not divorce a woman he married after having slandered her. No one who is castrated shall enter into the holy priesthood. A man must not divorce a woman unless he finds same unseemliness, some unseemliness in her, causing her to find no favor in his eyes. Do not set a stranger in the office of king. The king must not put his trust in military power nor cause the people to return to Mizraim, that is Egypt. The king must not multiply to himself wives nor allow himself to be ruled by them. The king must not allow himself to be ruled by lust for wealth. The Kohanim. Kohanim must not allow their hair to grow long. Kohanim must not tear nor serve with torn priestly garments. The Kohanim must not forsake the appointed office. A Kohen must not marry a woman who is a harlot. A Kohen must not marry a woman profaned. A Kohen must not marry a woman who has divorced her husband. The Kohen Gadol must not marry a woman who is profaned. The Kohen Gadol must not marry a woman defiled by harlotry. The Kohanim must not become ritually unclean except for the their nearest relatives. The Kohen Gadol must not go near any dead body. The Kohen Gadol must not become ritually unclean for any dead body. The tribe of Levi shall have no part in the division of the land of Israel. The tribe of Levi shall have no inheritance other than God's portion. The Kohanim must not shave their heads bald in honor of the dead. Nazarites. A Nazarite must not drink wine or any beverage made from grapes. A Nazarite must not eat fresh grapes. A Nazarite must not eat raisins. A Nazarite must not become ritually unclean for the dead. A Nazarite must not eat the 
skins of grapes. A Nazarite must not eat grape seeds. A Nazarite must not go near a dead body. A Nazarite must not shave his hair during the time of a separation. Judgment and conduct of judges. A judge must not pervert justice by rendering his own opinion. He must judge according to God's laws. A judge must not accept bribes. A judge must not show partiality to the rich. A judge must not be afraid to give righteous judgments. A judge must not show partiality to the poor. A judge must not deny justice to the poor in his lawsuits. A judge must not allow, must not show pity to the guilty. A judge must not pervert the justice due to the stranger or the fatherless. Do not spread a false report. Do not fail to report sin or testify in an investigation. Do not follow the crowd in doing evil. Do not appoint a judge, one who is ignorant of God's laws. Do not give false testimony in a lawsuit or investigation. The judges must not accept false testimony in a case. Do not judge people for the actions of either their parents or their children. Do not judge a matter on the testimony of one witness. Do not murder. The judges must not condemn an innocent or righteous person. Do not judge a matter until it has been fully investigated. Do not put a murderer to death before the judges hear his case. Do not fail to carry out the sentence of judgment. Do not punish the innocent victim of crime. Do not accept ransom from one who willfully murders. He must surely be put to death death. Do not accept ransom from anyone who killed accidentally. He must remain at the city of refuge. Do not endanger anyone's life. Do not neglect a to protect against hazards. Do not mislead another person. Do not administer more punishment than the law allows. Do not go about tail bearing or slandering anyone. Do not bear hatred for anyone. Do not share in another's guilt by not correcting sin. Do not seek revenge against your neighbor. Do not bear a grudge against your neighbor. Do not take the mother when taking the young birds. Do not shave a diseased area of skin. Do not remove the sins of leprosy. Do not neglect to inform the Kohanim when a dead body is found. Do not permit a witch to leave. Do not force a bridegroom to perform foreign military service during the first year of his marriage. Do not rebel against the teaching of God's anointed servants. Do not add to any of God's laws. Do not take away from any of God's laws. Do not cause revile or rebel against God's appointed judges. Do not cause revile or rebel against the authority placed by God. Do not cause the deaf. Do not cause parents or teachers. Do not strike or become violent with parents or teachers. Do not walk on the Sabbath. Do not conduct your own business or pleasure on the Sabbath. Do not kindle a fire on the Sabbath. Do not walk on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do not walk on the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do not walk on the Feast of Shavuot. Do not walk on the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. Do not walk on the first day of the Feast of Sukkot. Do not walk on the last great day. Do not walk on Yom Kippur, the community. The Levites must not neglect the duty of God in the high tabernacle. The Kohen Gadol must not enter the Holy of Holies without the appropriate sacrifice. A Kohen with a defect or blemish must not enter the Holy of Holies at all. A Kohen with a defect or blemish must not come near to offer the food of God. A Kohen with a temporary blemish must not come near to participate in the service of the high tabernacle until the blemish has healed. The Kohanim must not exchange their duties with their assistant, the Levites. The Kohanim must not drink wine or strong drink before entering the inner court of the high tabernacle to perform their duties or teach the law. No one other than the Kohanim may come near to minister to God. The Kohanim must not serve in the inner court of the high tabernacle while ritually unclean. The Kohanim must not serve in the inner court of the high tabernacle until they have completed their purification. Do not enter the high tabernacle while ritually unclean. Do not fail to ritually purify by laundering, bathing, and going to the Kohanim for atonement at the appointed time after becoming ritually unclean. Do not build an altar of cut stone. The Kohanim must not go up to the altar by steps. The Kohanim must not allow the fire on the altar to be extinguished. The Kohanim must not burn any unauthorized incense on the golden altar. Do not make oil according to the holy anointing oil for use outside the community. The holy anointing oil must not be misused. Do not make incense according to the formula of the holy incense for personal use. Do not remove the poles from the Ark of the Covenant. Do not remove the Kohen Gadol's breastplate from the effort. 365 and the last. Do not make the holy garments improperly so that they tear. Hear, O Israel, Hashem our God, Hashem is one. Hazak, Hazak, Vini, Shazak. Be strong, be strong, and let us all be strengthened. Wherever you're seated, ask for the mercy of God. You have heard his word. You have seen your shortcomings. 
wherever you are seated, ask for God's mercy. You have heard his word, you've seen your shortcoming. Ebobne dono, biko your chineke bere. Inugo nuye, ifugebe dalamba. If you get busy, okay, we'll all not do it again. If you go, you will chuck you in the dal. You are not going to be You have seen the law of God, which you have not kept. Maybe because of ignorance, but it has been made away to you now. Ask God to have mercy upon you. Forgive your transgressions. Father, I did not do well. Have mercy. Pardon me. Wash away my transgression. Remove from me all filthy garments. Do not treat me according to my ignorance, but according to your abundance of mercy. Pardon my iniquities. Hear our prayers. For you are the only God who answers prayers. Begin to round up your prayers. Zuroke Chineke Mo Izuroke Made Zuroke Madunina to remove our dirty garments to reclothe us with your righteousness to enable us with your spirit to do your will that it may be well with us now and forevermore 